Hello, Spain versus Portugal. Which one is better if you're looking to acquire second citizenship and a, and a European passport? Medellin for a single woman? What? And who in the world would invest in Cyprus with all of their historical baggage? These are among the questions we're going to address in just a moment. I'm Kathleen Petticord. I'm the founder and president of Live and Invest Overseas, and I'm here with Leif Simon, our resident Ask Him Anything expert. You can ask Leif any question, and I guarantee you he has an answer based on experience. So that's how we're going to dive into this Ask Us Anything conversation. We're going to start, as I mentioned, with Spain versus Portugal. Robert B. wrote in to ask, okay, you guys, Spain has a big downside versus Portugal in that it takes 10 years to obtain citizenship versus five years in Portugal. You should make your subscribers aware of that. What do you say to that, please? The point of spending 10 years in Spain versus five years in Portugal before you can be naturalized is moot. Spain doesn't allow dual citizenship um, except from uh, their former colonies. So if, if you have an Ecuadorian passport, you can ha- you can also be naturalized in Spain and, and keep your Ecuadorian passport. If you're an American, you're going to be giving up your U.S. passport if you want to get naturalized in Spain. So we don't talk about Spain as an option for second citizenship generally. We do talk about, have talked about Portugal in the past. And many other European countries have five years as the uh, residency requirement before being naturalized and allow you to have dual citizenship. So the fact that Robert's stuck on the 10 years is a little bit off to me because it doesn't matter unless he's planning on giving up his U.S. citizenship, which is a different Right, different together. conversation. And perhaps Robert isn't aware of that nuance of that that particular point to do with acquiring Spanish citizenship that to draw out that point, it means you'd have to give up another citizenship you already hold. Right. If you're an American, you'd have to give up your U.S. passport. So I think maybe one big takeaway here is that there are lots of aspects to the big picture idea agenda of acquiring a second citizenship, a second passport. And you want to speak with a real expert, with someone with long right. experience helping people to do that in the jurisdiction where you're looking specifically because the nuances and the particularities, the particulars change jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Right. OK. Donna R. writes to say, I usually don't chime in on your recommendations but I'm blown away that you could be recommending as a good place for a retired single female Medellin, Colombia. Are are you not aware of the complete saturation of drugs, brutal, bloody gangs, and that too many natives there don't like white people? Yes, it may be dirt cheap to live there, but safe and sound for a single white female, about as safe as climbing into a bathtub full of sharks. Whoever recommended that should be given an extended leave of absence and a psych evaluation. That would be me. That's my recommendation. I own it completely well, and I stand behind it fully. Well, where, where to start, Donna? First of all, if you're in a bath full, tub full of sharks, they're probably really little sharks. So you're going to be pretty safe. Wouldn't worry about that. But as for Medellin, where have you been the last 10, 15 years? Maybe you've only watched Narcos on Netflix and that's your entire perspective on Medellin. One thing about the, they don't like white people. In Medellin, pretty much everybody's white. Medellin is one of the most purebred, if you will, um, regions of Colombia from Spanish descendants. There's not, there wasn't a lot of mixing with the indigenous. And so if you go to Medellin, you're going to fit in just fine. Most of our friends in Medellin are whiter than I am. Um, So that's not an issue. The drug lord, Pablo Escobar, if you finish the narco series, he died. It was in the mid 90s. I forget the exact year now. It's 2024. It's 30 years later. Most of the drug activity and gang activity going on now, bringing drugs into the U.S. is Mexico and that the dangers are in Mexico. And that's not even all of Mexico. But in Medellin itself, it's safe to walk the streets like any place else in the world, especially when where there's a uh, dis- uh, disparity between um Well, the wealthy and the poor in a big city don't walk around with a Rolex Rolex on your wrist and you'll be fine. We know single white females who live in uh, Medellin. We know couples where the wife walks around without any problem and feels safe. One couple has lived there for uh, almost 10 years now. Um, And 
are perfectly fine, happy, and safe. So please don't take what you see in the news and especially what you see in docu series that are have been dramatized as what's going on on the ground um, right. in, in a place today. Uh, we make the point often at every opportunity, and this is a good one, that the only way to judge for for yourself if you're comfortable in a place and if a place is safe for you is to go spend time in the place yourself, not to base your position, your judgment on anywhere in the world on someone else's experience or something you've seen on television or something you've read on the internet or a, a, a caution from the U.S. State Department. None of that is a reason to take a destination off your list. You, uh, if somewhere interests you, you need to go see for yourself. And I would put Medellin on your list if you are looking for somewhere with great weather, very low cost of living, very safe. I'm going to underscore that because I, I would say that Donna is has been misguided and, and uh, she's misunderstanding the opportunity in Medellin, as I think is still too often the case. That's why I chose this question for today, because uh, Medellin is not anything that Donna is imagining it to be. It is safe, beautiful, pleasant, friendly, welcoming. The people are respectful. Uh, I have spent a lot of time there on my own. I've spent a lot of time there with my children, including when they were young. We have an apartment ourselves in Medellin that we don't get to return to often enough. So I won't go on and on, but I will say, please don't think any of these things are the reality of Medellin, Colombia today because they're not. Right. Okay, one more place that is currently suffering from misunderstanding, misrepresentations and misperceptions in the marketplace, and that is Cyprus. And Mario M., he writes, I think your recommendation of Cyprus is risky in every respect. Nice place, yes, but you need to be upfront. These conditions don't exist in your other recommendations, so bravo there. But Cyprus has geopolitical issues, and I humbly suggest you reconsider it. I personally have taken all European considerations off the table, thanks to Adolf Putin. All of Europe is at risk with while the war in uh, UK, Ukraine continues, and I'm afraid it could break out into actual world war. That being said, the smaller countries you recommend in Europe still have good value because they're not much of a target and there's lots of space to homestead. Anyway, just thought you should consider. All right. I don't even know, again, where to start with this one. Yes, Cyprus is in the far east of the Mediterranean. Um, it's close. It, he's worried about the Ukraine war with Cyprus. He'd be more worried about the, the Israeli-Gaza thing going on right now. Um, for Cyprus. But in fact, it, neither one is affecting Cyprus in a negative way. Northern Cyprus has seen an influx of Ukrainians um, leaving their country uh, to buy property, because if you buy property in Northern Cyprus, you get residency, the right to stay in the country. So a lot of um, Ukrainians, also a lot of Russians um, who want to get out of their country have moved to Northern Cyprus. Cyprus, the island, the Republic of Cyprus is a member of the EU. And I guess that's why he's tying everything to the rest of the European countries. So he's not, he's not going to move to Portugal because um, of the war in Ukraine. Portugal is about as far from, uh, well, it is as far from mm -hmm. the U Ukrainian war you as you can get. get in Europe. Uh, so, okay, don't go, to, don't go to Europe. Where are you going to go? What's his name again? Mario. Mario. Um, if you're worried about World War III, go to Argentina. I love Argentina. Mm -hmm. It's a great place. And it is... A, it is as far away from you, from anywhere as you can get, um, that has everything that you need. New Zealand is also usually considered in, in this context, but New Zealand doesn't want new people. You can get residency in Argentina. It's a big country with a low population density, and it has all the natural resources that the U.S. has. So you can, you know, if the world shuts down, Argentina is one place that uh, you could probably uh, enjoy yourself. Right. No matter what else is happening anywhere else in the world. And this right. is a good topic, right? We're living in a time of tremendous uncertainty. And I think that maybe it's it's an overreaction to say I'm taking all Europe off the table because of what's going on in Ukraine or what's going on in Gaza right now. Right. Two it, very, it, very it, unfortunate situations. It's a short, it's a short term <clears throat> perspective. But if, if that, okay, fair enough. If you're nervous about Europe right now, where should you consider if you are looking for a place to escape it all? For me, I put Belize at the top of the list. Argentina is a great pick, but I like Belize. Uh, Belize is so off the world's radar. Nobody cares about it. Nobody pays any attention to it. No one's ever targeting Belize. They have no standing army. They have no beef with anybody. Uh, it, so 
that's a great place to escape it all to a very simple back to basics lifestyle that where you could live very uh, self-sufficiently. So another example of, you know, no matter what goes on in the rest of the world, life will carry on in Belize as right. it has for centuries. You know, you can live off the land and, and have a good life. And so there are great options if what you if if you're you have an agenda which a lot of people do right now to try to put the troubles of the world as far away from you as possible. You have good choices. Argentina and Belize would be two. We're going to leave it there for right now. I'm Kathleen Pettigore. This is Leif Simon. Follow us here on YouTube or in our daily overseas opportunity letter. Live and invest overseas.com is where you can find out a whole lot more about us. Send in your questions. We'll be in touch again soon. Thank you. Thank you.